what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word PMI ACP? To me, it's about Agile. And in fact, the word ACP also stands for Agile Certified Practitioner. So, uh, and what do you do? You are at your PMI ACP exam prep. Yes, congratulations, you have started on that journey. So what do you do? You first talk about the very basics, which is introduction to Agile. Imagine you, uh, you have to climb Mount Everest. Okay, you want to climb Mount Everest, maybe six months down the line. So what would you do now? If you have decided that this is what you have to do, what will you do now? Yes, you will prepare yourself for embarking on that beautiful journey. Okay, and how would you prepare yourself? You will prepare your mind, your body, you will take care of your diet, you will take care of uh, breathing techniques, yoga. So, what you are doing, basically you are preparing yourself to go and climb Mount Everest. You are preparing for that strenuous trek. Yes, and just like you prepare your basics before you embark on the journey, introduction to Agile is the very base and foundation for your PMI ACP exam prep journey. So let's get started. So what we are going to cover today, we are going to cover, we are going to see introduction to Agile, what is Agile, brief history, why, mindset and uh, mindset is extremely critical because this, you know, in any scenario, it's our mindset which decides the success or failure, okay. And then we are also going to look at Agile Manifesto, which is uh, which comprises of four values and 12 principles. And then we are going to look at each of those values and principles in detail. But yes, we are not going to cover all of that in just one video. So you will see multiple videos coming on this chapter. So let's enjoy. Let's have some fun understanding what Agile is. What is the beauty of Agile? So what do you think Agile is? Yeah, the if you see the dictionary meaning, it means being flexible. Being flexible. Do not be rigid. Okay. If I talk about waterfall, you know, what was happening in waterfall? There was a requirement gathering phase. There was a planning phase where I would, you know, decide on all my plans, everything up front. And then there was, um, you know, design analysis and design. Then there was uh, development, then testing, then handover. And finally, uh, or maybe here production to environment and then handover. Okay. So here in waterfall, our plans were fixed. Our design was fixed. Even before I started coding for any of the uh, you know features or functionality i had already decided what i'm going to do and how i'm going to do which means we are not being flexible with respect to you know what if there is a new market trend that comes yeah what would you do will you stick with your plans or you will adapt as per those uh, market trends what if, uh, you know, you see that uh, there is a latest uh, standard that uh, the standards body ha is, has started working on and they are plan planning to launch it maybe one year down the line. Would you participate in this? Would you take care of this in your project? Or will you develop a new product based on the old standards? How, what would be the life of this? One year, because after one year, it's going to be obsolete. If it is, you know, if the environment is such, uh, you know, that every one year or one and a half year, uh, things move, then probably it is, it is fine. So it all depends on your project, what type of work you are doing. So agile is 
being flexible based on your project you be flexible to welcome changes okay welcome changes and adapt to those changes okay move quickly easily and adapt to the changes that are coming that's what agile is and uh, if we see you know when i when i take this class of pmi acp exam prep i you know i ask many times people uh, what they think agile is and yes definitely people uh, you know say incremental it is iterative yeah it it is fast it re, uh, delivers result fast um, they also say there is no planning no documentation no management and no design activities which happen in agile but is that really true you know and is it that you know delivery same project if you deliver through waterfall and you know let's assume there are no changes okay let's assume our uh, requirements everything remained the way it Uh, it was originally there was no changes but one project we uh, you know the same uh, one team delivered the same thing using waterfall the other team delivered using agile was the end result and please uh, understand i am only talking about the complete product okay were agile teams able to make them fast let's see let's see what it is so before we get the answer to that let's take a quick look at agile manifesto agile manifesto is the manifesto which was prepared by the uh, 17 agile practitioners uh, who uh, you know they they were the people who are responsible for the birth of agile you can say that yes they conceived agile in the sense that you know uh, they all were using some form of iterative and incremental methodologies and they came together to discuss about that which we are going to see in just upcoming slides and they came up with the agile manifesto these are the first is the values that all agile teams believe in yes these are the values that team believes in and what it says we are uncovering better ways of developing software by doing it and by helping others do it through this we have come to value individuals and interactions over process and tools working software over comprehensive documentation customer collaboration over contract negotiation responding to change over following a plan so if you see you know uh, why there is value in the items on the right there is value in the items on the right but we value items on the left more this is higher priority okay so what what this manifesto is saying it is not saying that we are not going to do any planning or any design or any documentation it's just that we have things which we value more over this so over comprehensive documentation we prefer working software more but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that there is not going to be any documentation at all right so prepare what is needed when is needed but in case you know the best way to show it to the customer uh, you know to get uh, approval from the customer is to show him the working software so show don't tell okay instead of writing a long long document describing everything in detail and maybe in lot of technical terms which the customer might not even understand you show him by preparing a small piece and when he takes a look at it he realizes hmm yeah this is exactly what i was looking for or you know what i think uh, yeah we we did well but uh, maybe if we have done little bit of this tweaking it would look better or it would function better 
and then the team willingly adapts to those changes and it's not that you know anybody has done wrong it's just by looking at things by using them by touching them people get to know really what they need sometimes we don't have that clarity unless and until we see that and that happens with all of us right another thing that you need to see is responding to change over following a plan so our plans are not cast in iron okay they are not cast in iron so which means we do plan okay we do plan for the things at hand but we are flexible to respond to change and that's what agile is all about agile is about being flexible embracing change delivering what the customer needs okay so the focus is on customer always customer working software deliver it to the customer individuals and interactions have conversations have discussions okay we prefer the human element over processes and tools that's what the agile manifesto is and then let's get the answer in reality yes it is incremental which means we create one step at a time and when we you know after certain things we see this is the whole that has been delivered so at one iteration we created one increment second end of the second iteration our increment was the whole this at the end of third iteration our increment became this so we deliver on top of what we have delivered so far iterative yes short cycles in short cycles we deliver our soft software so fast is it really fast maybe maybe not we just see the results faster okay so instead of remember this was where in waterfall the customer first time got his hands on the software but what we are doing in agile we are doing it in small small cycles okay and at the end of every cycle customer gets to see some of the deliverables and when he gets to see those deliverables he realizes that yeah this is what i wanted or you know we can do some changes here or who say who knows oh my god this is a latest market trend you know let's let's adapt to that let's introduce those changes here so we are always building the right product and the customer gets to see the results faster you know after every short cycle after every short iteration the customer gets to see the results and that is why they say that the results are seen faster may see little bit fast when we do agile maybe instead of here final product you might be able to deliver here and we will see in you know upcoming chapters when you see the videos which are available at www.eduhubspot.com i will write it here for you okay so when you go to this website there there is a pmi acp exam prep and there are a lot of videos on different chapters which are uploaded and you will see in subsequent chapters that um, you know that uh, the results uh, i mean how fast this delivery is done maybe because we do we do not write exhaustive documentation no we are not we write only what is needed okay we do not do exhaustive planning up front because we know that things are dynamic things are bound to change which means whatever plans we have made or whatever documents we have written they may all go waste they may go down the drain and you don't you don't want to use anything which is going down the drain right so you will have to again create a plan again write document would you want to do that no so we we don't have focus on 
doing planning upfront. What we do? We do planning which is rolling wave planning, rolling wave for the near term items. We plan only for the next iteration, let's say. Of course, we create a roadmap that's, uh, that is there, but at a very high level. Okay, but granular level planning happens only when you are actually going to work on it. Okay, and we progressively elaborate our plans because at every iteration, every short cycle, when we are planning, our plans progressively elaborate. Okay, we do design, we do analysis and design, but we don't do it upfront. Okay, it's not an upfront design, it is an emergent design, which means that since we are doing rolling wave and uh, we are working on small, small chunks, so the overall design of the system emerges on its own. And we do have management, but our management is servant leader, okay, or adaptive leader, okay. So, based on the situation or you can say situational leadership, okay, based on the situation, the leader um, uh, use that, <laughs> you know, he employs the, uh, how to handle the situation, okay, and he is a servant leader. What is a servant leader? A leader who is servant to the team, which means he ensures that everything is in place for his or her team to work effectively and efficiently okay removes all obstacles ensures all resources are there provides any kind of support morale boosting motivation everything that a leader has to do he does it to ensure that the team agile team is successful and that's what we are going to uh, do that with you we are going to help you support you in your PMI ACP exam prep journey so that you are successful. You are able to ace the PMI ACP exam. Okay. So, Agile. As per Agile Alliance, Agile is defined as the ability to balance and be flexible, create and respond to change. Okay. Just like this big elephant is balancing on this ball the agile teams the projects balance as per the changing needs as per the changing environment okay and why do they do that in order to succeed in an uncertain and turbulent environment right there are a lot of uncertainties around the projects these days and we see that not just these days i i guess for several years now our projects our things are not uh, something which you know you once def define and they continue they they have been there are so many changes which keep coming Let, let's take an example of mobile phones okay how many of us actually use mobile fun, uh, phones for 5 years or 10 years? Do you see that? No. Every 2 years I see that the phone is no longer usable. And 2 years is also too much. You know, every 6 months there is a newer innovative way of doing things. Right? That is the need of our people want innovation people want changes excuse me so people want changes and when our product lines they have to handle those changes they have to adapt to those changes okay so there is uncertainty in the environment which is there and we have to balance Howsoever big the project is, we have to balance to be able to succeed. And everybody wants to succeed. Yes, you also want to succeed in your PMI ACP exam prep. And that is why pay focus here on what we are learning here. This is going to help you. We are going to support you here. Okay. So what is Agile Software Development? Agile Software Development 
is an umbrella term for a set of methods and practices based on the values and principles expressed in the agile manifesto so what what it what is agile software development you know in agile we deliver in short chunks okay it's not a one fixed delivery what we do what we do this whole cycle we divide among smaller smaller chunks okay so at every chunk we deliver software working software and the focus of this working software is providing most value to the customer okay so what basically i am doing based on my team strength and my capacity of the team my productivity of the team and the things uh, which are their requirements okay i pick the highest priority requirements which are also known as user stories you will see read about this in our chapter on analysis and design and i would recommend that you go to our website it's written here edu hub spot okay and uh, take a look at the videos on analysis and design chapter and if you want some qu queries or access you can write down at services at eduhubspot.com okay so we have requirements okay we pick the highest priority requirement which brings the most value to the customer and we deliver those requirements okay so what we do in every iteration we plan we develop we test and finally we do review with the customer okay so what what are we doing we are planning we are picking the highest priority requirements which bring most value to the customer because agile teams always focus on providing maximum value to their customers okay our customers are the ones who are in our heart and we want them to be happy with the delivery that we are giving so we are going to give most value to the customer and when we do development we ensure that the quality of our deliveries is high very high and you will see in subsequent chapters how this is ensured okay there is a big big focus on uh, the quality of the Uh, deliverables and in the second video of uh, the same chapter which is freely available as well you will see the 12 principles and uh, in this principles also you will see there is a very focused attention towards technical excellence and the quality of the software okay we test agile teams test at you know every level every day actually multiple times in a day they test they test everything okay we they also you know lot of code reviews are done unit testing is done functional testing regression testing they do 15 minute testing nightly weekend so they test all the time and all the tests are automated except one which you can see in product quality chapter videos which is the one only one type of test is not automated rest everything is okay and finally they do review with the customer okay so they do the review with the customer and they get feedback from the customer okay customer is happy yay yes this is exactly what i wanted okay but if there is a feedback like you know this way by doing uh, making these changes we can adjust little bit we can make the product line all the more better then why not end of the day we want our product line to be better yes so that's what agile software development is where we plan we define we write code we test we review with the customer and we adapt as per the feedback we 
get. Okay, so let's see the difference between traditional way of handling projects and the agile way of handling projects. Traditional, here I mean by traditional non-agile environment. Uh, example could be waterfall. Okay, so we have already had a very brief discussion about it previously. But let's see, you know, if this is the uh, non-agile environment, and this is just an analogy to help you understand better what would happen in non-agile. We would start working on it. Customer can't see anything. He's not happy. Or even if he sees, it's like it's not usable. Not happy. Not happy. Not happy. Hmm. The whole structure of the card is there. Still, I can't use it. Not happy. Only when finally the whole product is delivered, the customer becomes happy, right? So what we have done is, even though we have worked for, let's say, four months building this product, for the first three months, the customer was not happy. And maybe he is having some doubts in his mind. See, when you can't, you don't know about the uh, progress of the project or you don't know about the, you can't actually see what is happening. You, you get those doubts, right? You, you, sometimes you can be scared also. See, if you are very popular and you are very good at delivering uh, high quality products on time, then it's a different story. Maybe, you know, because customer will have they have trust in you okay but if if you have this is the first time you are working with this customer and they don't know what's happening it's like it's going to be a, you know it could cause some uh, perception issues it could cause yes but none uh, nonetheless let's see what happens in an agile environment hmm you delivered something a board uh, no, this is not what I am expecting. I know I am expecting a vehicle for my commute. But no, this is not. I don't want to use board. Board with a handle? Hmm. Okay, but again, this is not what I want. You have made a bicycle now. You have delivered a bicycle. See what we are doing with every iteration we are progressively elaborating our product and customer is seeing the results of those progressive elaboration. So, on the third month, when we delivered bicycle, he was like, okay, yeah, this looks fine, you know, but maybe it's too much of an effort. Maybe I want something more. And after the discussions, you delivered a you know, Harley Davidson kind of bicycle, motorcycle, not bicycle, motorcycle. And customer definitely is happy. If he likes, uh, you know, motorcycles, he is a motorcycle person, he would be very happy. And maybe this is the end of it. Maybe when customer sees, uh, he can say, you know what, we can stop here only. We are happy. Maybe we don't have to progress further. But, or he can say, you know, we can do little more enhancements. Let's make it a car. And you deliver a car in the next month. And customer is very, very happy. Okay. So, you see in Agile, when they start, you know, with every iteration, they start getting some results. The happiness or the satisfaction level of the customer starts to build up. Okay. You see, it starts building here. Whereas in non-Agile, Customer sees only at the end of the project and that's when he gets satisfied. Before that, he's, he's not very sure what's happening. Well, even if we are giving progress updates, he can't see the results. Unless you see, unless you experience, you will always have some doubt in your mind. Of course, we all are human beings, right? So, that is bound to happen. Yeah, let's. I will just reiterate once, although we have the next slide focused on that. So, in non agile environment, if this is the final delivery, whatever work we have done before, 
the customer will get to see only at the end whereas in agile if this is the final delivery you know we are showcasing at every small chunks okay at every at the end of every iteration we are showcasing our results which enhances customer satisfaction right so that's what agile is let's take a quick look at it so what happens in non agile environment we spend lot of uh, time to define the uh, things to do which means requirement gathering planning analysis and design right so this is let's say you have spent here 2 months the first 2 months you have focused only to do planning analysis and design what is the end result have you produced anything no right you have not produced anything you actually started working on building uh, writing code and building software only after the end of 2 months and that's when you start you know doing something till here if the project closes here end result is nothing you have not done anything at all on the project which is valuable which customer can use of course you have done some work i'm not saying that but what from the customer perspective if nothing is delivered there is no work right and then you integrate you test and then you give the final software in agile how does it help first iteration you define you code you test and you deliver the increment remember increment we talked about this is my iteration 1 increment in in iteration 2 i delivered this so my total increment became this this is my product in iteration 3 again i built similar amount and after iteration 3 this is the total value which the customer is getting right so slowly and slowly the customer is seeing the results which he can review customer has the opportunity to review these results and provide us feedback okay feedback is not always negative okay we we have a tendency to think that feedback is negative no feedback is a learning opportunity okay both for the team and for the customer when you start uh, using something you tend to realize uh, what exactly you your needs are okay i'll give another example i went and bought a uh, you know a laptop and it had certain basics already pre installed softwares but they were not enough i wanted uh, microsoft uh, office to be installed pre installed which was not there and it actually delayed my uh, you know the whole thing so i had the option to either install uh, you know buy and install microsoft office on that laptop or i had the uh, option to get replace it with a new laptop since i had the uh, you know uh, it, it's a choice right it's a choice so what you you see you start working on it and you realize that okay you know this meets my basic needs but i need more processing power maybe while uh, buying the laptop we didn't uh, realize what's the processing power of course we did that check uh, but yes microsoft office we didn't do the check at that time and we needed it so we adjusted we adapted so we had a choice either to buy microsoft office and install it or get a new laptop and depending on the situation you can do that right so feedback is a learning opportunity both for customer and for the team 
right so maybe the uh, customer when he sees the results he says oh you know what i think this can be enhanced like this if you do uh, if you make changes a b c it will bring more value to me right so that's a, a learning opportunity because customer also when he sees he finds out what he wants team for team also it's a learning opportunity because maybe the customer explained it but team could not understand it so when they showcase the customer says you know what no 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 this is not what i was telling i was talking about uh, doing a b and c instead of d e and f okay so uh, then customer uh, then the team says okay yeah we have some extra work to do but let's let's do it if this is most valuable then let's do it right so it's a learning opportunity feedback is always a learning opportunity and with every iteration we build some software which you know this uh, this software was maybe this part and after iteration 2 our whole increment has become this and in iteration 3 we added other part this is the new part and this is the old which was done till iteration 2 so after iteration 3 it was the increment was this okay and the final software final software is the same here also and here also but what is the difference the difference is we have adapted as per the requirement as per the needs of the customer so the chances that this final software you know the probability that this is doing exactly what the customer wants is very very high right because we have taken feedback we have adjusted as per the needs of the customer so if i have made those adjustments the very high probability is there that i have built the right product yes isn't it but what happens in non agile environment you know he gets to use the software after let's say 4 months just a hypothetical number okay it could be 4 years also who knows and then he realize the customer says this is not at all what i wanted he waited for so long and this software is useless to the customer let's say he is not willing to buy it and then all those fundas happen that uh, uh, you know you signed off my requirements document i clearly said that this is of what i am going to build he said no this was not clear this is not my requirement i wanted this this is what the meaning of this particular requirement and all those discussions and fightings and conflicts arise here and so the agile way of building software should be used for projects which are highly dynamic in nature okay highly dynamic and which are some example of such projects knowledge work projects yeah i write too much i know <laughs> so knowledge work projects are something which are you know they are complex they are uh, uh, they are dynamic they tend to change technology tends to change domain has lot of changes and new and new innovations keep coming out in those domains right so knowledge work projects are uh, by nature they are very dynamic and they uh, there are lot of changes which happens in them and that is why such projects we should Uh, focus by using you know we should deliver through agile way okay using agile way that's the way uh, as compared to let's say you are building a house okay do you expect lot of changes in the house no maybe not okay it's all predefined and house is also you know the uh, plan is finalized and it is the same way in which all the houses in the uh, you know maybe maybe they are row houses 
so you can't even change the plan let's say so what will happen it's all predefined fixed this is when it will happen all those things and this is the output that will come it's quite visual and we are not expecting any changes to it maybe the builder has not given uh, any uh, you know flexibility to make any changes maybe you know even the uh, wooden flooring also uh, uh, there are two or three options provided and you have to pick among them only so such projects maybe agile is not the right way they can be done in, uh, using waterfall or any other non agile environment but for knowledge work projects you must use agile way of handling projects okay so history so we have talked about what agile is uh, how it works agile software development let's just take a look at how it actually you know became popular so um, you know in uh, on 11th to 13th feb 2001 17 agile practitioners they met at snowbird ski resort utah i know what you are thinking yes it was a fun trip okay but it also had a fixed agenda behind it these 17 agile practitioners were the ones who were using uh, you know who were using iterative way of uh, delivering projects so they already had certain uh, you know uh, methodologies or you know they were maybe not defined methodologies but they had some practices which they were using which helped them deliver uh, you know software iteratively and embrace changes okay so um, they decided okay let's go let's have some fun fun and some work let's do it together let's meet and try to understand what each, each and every person is doing so these are the people who actually met there Kent Beck, Mike Beadle, uh, James, Jim Highsmith, Alistair Cogburn, to name a few. Okay, so they actually met uh, there, and the purpose of the meet was to find commonality among various practices. See, all these people were using certain practices, and they were ensuring that their projects are meeting customers' demands. they are delivering in short cycles and they uh, you know their customers are happy with the deliveries what they are doing so they they actually came together and said okay let's find commonality among various practices and let's define a base for lightweight methodologies see waterfall is considered as a very heavyweight methodology why because of so much upfront planning and design which is done and lot of uh, documents lengthy documents that are made and which may not be applicable because things are dynamic so they wanted to establish a base for lightweight methodologies and find ways to quickly build working software and get in, into the hands of end users so they basically wanted to see what each and everybody is doing what are the different practices they just want to find if there is a common base and uh, you know which um, which is common across everybody and they want to establish something solid on which you know they can have they they were not together to make one single methodology please remember that was not the purpose okay they all had separate methodologies that they were using the focus was on creating a base or a foundation on which these methodologies can work that was the purpose of meet and this foundation this base is agile mindset agile values agile principles and that we are going to see some in this module and some in our subsequent videos on this chapter so why was agile till uh, you know it was conceived because of the industry frustration industry was frustrated 
because they started you know we would start working on the project by the time we would deliver the software this was it was not matching customers needs maybe the market changed okay maybe the customers needs changed okay but what was delivered was not matching so there was a widespread industry frustration there was time lag between delivery and the requirements product was not matching then market needs value was not delivered speedily and there was lack of flexibility in general remember the stringent change control process i am sure all of you would have already seen this and the big big presentations and the homework associated with this change control process so the changes yes requirements change system change technology change priorities change markets change competitive environment change right so there are so many changes which happen and if we are not adapting to those changes we are gone right we have to adapt as per the changes which are happening around us yes that's if we deliver our product with that i am sure we are going to have lot of revenue out of that business out of that project that product so these are some of the uh, examples of companies who fail to adapt you you remember the netflix and blockbuster days and you remember the uh, you know um, camera rolls and the advent of digital photography companies who thought that this is going to stay and this is not a competition they went down the drain what happened to blockbuster remember those days where you would go you want to rent a video and then you would be standing in queue and there is a late fee charges and if you don't return in those uh, you know the prescribed number of days you have to pay this fee you have to actually go to get the video you have to go to uh, return the video and then netflix happened and netflix was at that time not what it is now netflix uh, this was on door delivery so you would place a request and they will deliver the videos yes via mail via post to your door step you keep it you watch it there is no late fee you keep it for as many days as you want uh, of course there was like in a month you can uh, at a time you can have maybe let's say two videos or three videos depending on your package but you can keep those three videos for one full month nobody is going to be bothered about it nobody is going to charge you okay or you can return you can see these three videos every day one set return get another set of videos right and it all came with you know pre labeled pre stamped uh, envelope so that you just have to you actually didn't have to go anywhere it would come in my mailbox and i would just keep it back in the mailbox and somebody you know from the postal department postal services they would pick pick that up and mail it for me also so i was practically doing nothing just enjoying the video at home so what happened blockbuster did not see that as a competition they said we are huge we have the entire market nothing can happen to us and we all know what happened to black uh, blockbuster right and nowadays netflix is gone even further it's now video streaming so companies who fail to adapt as per the uh, you know changing requirements around them they they drown unless and until they adapt they don't go up you want them to go up you have to ensure that you are adapting as per the changes which are happening around you okay 
in your competitive environment, in your market environment, in the technological changes, processing power changes and many such things. And the customer needs are also changing, right? So what is the success factor of Agile? Success factor is delivering in short chunks, which is short increments and rapid feedback. After every increment, you are getting feedback, which means even if you, there is some, uh, you know, diversion needs to be taken or some changes needs to be done, you can do that. So you respond to those changes, you adapt, you learn, okay, and you adapt to those changes, you implement them so that you are always building the right product and that's what we want. We want our product and customer to be happy together, you know, they should be shaking hands. So, product is giving exactly what the customer wants. That's what is the success factor of Agile. Isn't it beautiful? So, next is the Agile mindset, which we are going to talk about. Again, this is a very, very important topic. Okay. Just like your base you know where if you are building a house what do you do you focus on the foundation how strong it is okay how much uh, and i'm talking about a concrete house not the wooden house here so concrete what would you do you will ensure that it goes deep there is enough iron steel the strength of the concrete is good, right? Because when your foundation is strong, your house is going, your house home is going to be strong. And that's what you want, right? You want a house which is strong, which will go long term, which will handle any adverse circumstances even, right? And that is what is Agile Mindset. It is the foundation. It is the most important thing. And believe me or not, but in most of the questions in PMI ACP exam prep, uh, you will see the questions that somewhere or other, uh, if you don't apply the Agile Mindset, you won't be able to answer the questions. So it's extremely important to understand Agile mindset. So, what is a mindset? Yes, mindset is way of thinking. You know, how we think. And what impacts our mindset? Our beliefs, our assumptions is what that impacts our mindset. Yes, mindset, you know, mindset is all about how we handle the situations when they come. What is it that is going behind our mind when, uh, you know, when faced with a particular scenario? Would we, uh, you know, would we shout? We, what, uh, we might handle it diplomatically or maybe when we are working in a team environment, okay, we are working with a team. Are we going to support each other or are we going to be very highly competitive? Okay, it's our beliefs, it's our assumptions that impact the way we feel, our emotions and that impact the way we think which impacts our behavior, right? Let's take an example. If there is a person in the team whom I, uh, you know, I believe that he is not good person, maybe I observed something. Maybe that was uh, not the right, uh, you know, thing to do, uh, which he did. And uh, I, actually, I will take an example. So, there was a person who uh, I was uh, walking out of the office. In fact, I was driving and I saw this person, uh, you know, he was having a very um uh, solid conversation with the uh, security uh, people there 
uh, you know the uh, persons uh, who were handling the uh, visitors and uh, so and i did not like the way he was talking to uh, this person he he was being rude and that was this was a new person on the team and i was like uh, mm -hmm, okay so maybe he has lot of attitude and uh, maybe he thinks very high of himself you know that's what by observation i made certain assumptions about him which in fact you know over the months of working together i realized those assumptions were wrong but what happened because i had made those as assumptions i started guarding my behavior around him i started thinking he is a rude person so i was also not being very friendly and supportive to him maybe my behavior he looking at my behavior he would have thought she thinks very high of him herself who knows right so our beliefs our assumptions impact our emotions which impacts our thought process and our behavior so mindset is extremely important whenever you are handling any situation because our behavior will tell whether i will be able to handle the situation or not right so what is an agile mindset then yes we we now know that mindset plays a big role but what is an agile mindset think about it hmm well that question was there in my mind as well and uh, you know when we uh, our organization one day they came and said we want to be agile and these are the two projects which are uh, picked up as pilot projects to uh, you know to be implemented in agile manner okay we were given some training my my project was one of the uh, project pilot project we were given some basic training on the practices what to do and all those things uh, primarily you know short cycles short iterations and daily stand up along with uh, review and feedback so this was the all that was told to us okay in the training short iteration so we will deliver instead of you know going uh, so we kind of you know considered this as small phases just like we have phases in waterfall uh, you know which are like 3 months or 4 months long we thought okay maybe it is a 1 month long phase what else it's it looks to be the same okay daily stand up we were like really this is like micromanagement and i am honestly telling you that this is what we were thinking so what what was happening actually organizations when they transform to agile they uh, you know they say okay this is the pilot project and this is your training so let's be agile okay so we started following practices we started looking at daily stand up we started following it and in our heart we were thinking this is being micromanagement in fact our scrum master acted you know he was like the boss who would take status update from everyone every day and he would question us okay so this practice and many people would actually tune out in the day i have told my thing okay i don't care what others are doing but is this what the daily stand up is about is this the purpose of daily stand up that is what you have to think about okay so what happened we applied methodologies we started tracking we started following practices but we were not seeing results there were lot of you know when you you are agile they, this is the advantage you know you will see improved results uh, faster deliveries and happier customers 
but we were really not seeing those results yes of course we were able to deliver faster but we were just going through the motions we because we did not understand the reason behind it so something was not right and i was not able to figure out what is not right and this followed with you know a detailed discussion with one of my colleague and what happened you know after i had that discussion you know this was more of a coffee table conversation and i said you know what i don't like being a child because uh, this is all you know it's the same new name you know it's a hype that is created it's a new name for face it's just people want to know uh, you know they want to sit on top of our head to find out really uh, you know what we are uh, we have done what we are going to do and this is nothing but just a piece of shit you can say that but what happened actually then this person actually guided me so what we did not get in the training this person explained the mindset agile mindset it explained the values and principles behind some of the practices that we were doing take for example daily stand up so daily stand up is not a status report meeting the purpose is not to see what everybody has done or what they are doing and are they are, are they following the plan which is created by the scrum master no it's not the purpose the purpose of daily stand up is that the whole team plan the project together okay it's a collaborative effort okay the whole team works the whole team works towards de-risking the project and planning on the go and any obstacles are there the team supports each other another another purpose is the learning everybody knows what's happening on the project transparency that's the purpose of daily stand up the purpose is not to question people on what they have done and why they have not been able to deliver the purpose is if somebody is facing a problem help them we want to be successful together okay so support maybe train maybe coach maybe mentor support the people on the team because when the project project will be successful when all of us will be successful not you not me all of us together when we deliver that's when the project is going to be successful so this discussion actually opened my mind and i realized that doing we were doing agile and we were not actually being agile and this is a statement doing agile is not equal to being agile uh, given by you know bob hartman who is also popularly known as agile bob and he has given lot of good things a uh, lot of articles i would recommend that uh, you know you should go and read them they are good okay so doing agile is not being agile which means doing agile is just follow the practices without understanding the real thought process behind those practices and being agile is you are following the practices but you are keeping values and principles in your mind you are actually following these values and principle you have your agile mindset is in place and that's how you follow the practice and when you follow the practice with values and principles that's when you will see the most results yes and that's when you will be most effective and most efficient and that's the realization i felt that day so what it is values principles and that guides the practices so practices are there but how to implement those uh, practices has to be guided by the values and principles and that what makes a agile behavior okay 
So being agile, what is being agile? Is doing agile, follow the practices and thinking agile, values and principles. The most important thing in being agile, values and principles. And that's when you are truly flexible, when you are truly agile. So learning, there are no failures, only lessons learned. Okay, so this is uh, one learning that I had from all those discussions that we, we are not talking about feedback as a failure. Okay, it is not a failure. It is a opportunity. It is a learning opportunity. Okay, feedback is about lessons learned irrespective of who has learned the lesson it's about gaining more knowledge on the project or maybe the way uh, customer is thinking so gaining more knowledge and we become agile when we implement those lessons in agile every time whenever there is a learning we implement those lessons in the very subsequent iteration or sprint that we are going to uh, execute so it's not about okay you know we face this problem and this is the root cause and this is the lesson learned and then we forget about it no we are going to take actions we are going to implement those learnings we are going to implement those lessons and that's how we continuously improve we always focus towards enhancing ourselves enhancing our skills our competencies our behavior our thoughts the way we handle situations the way we handle people yes and that's how we incrementally move towards our goal okay another example uh, about agile mindset even you know when i started uh, learning to drive i was pretty scared and believe me uh, you know, driving is not easy. Driving is definitely not easy, at least from where I am coming. But when I, uh, the very first time I drove, I actually, uh, you know, put it on ramp or, uh, uh, you know, the sidewalk, what um, I think they call sidewalk here. So I had um, hit it. I took the car on top of the ramp and that's uh, that was the first lesson learned for me and i realized what mistake i did and eventually fixed that put in more efforts and more attention and then i started driving uh, you know i slowly and slowly gained expertise and how i gained expertise every time especially for this car driving i was ensuring that every small mistake also I am doing or maybe it's not you who is doing a mistake. It's the other drivers on the road. They can do mistakes as well, right? So I, I started learning from the situations I was being put in while driving. And later on, I have finally come to a stage where I drive. Sometimes I leave office and I don't even realize when I have reached home, you know, it just comes naturally, intuitively to me. So, th this happens when you actually learn. Maybe you are focused uh, on uh, enhancing your knowledge from the lessons learned. Or you are, uh, you know, you are just inherently, you are learning from the experiences you are facing on the road. So, but this is the, le uh, this is where agile teams actually reach because they continuously improve themselves they continuously learn from the situations from the variety of experiences that they are having from the conversations that they are having right and that's what makes agile teams successful love for learning desire for self-improvement feedback is a source of information continuously improve embrace challenges when you embrace challenges that's when you grow i remember the first time okay by the way i have uh, i'm scared of heights and uh, a very small hike i went to 
that was the first time i went i was scared to death but i wanted to i wanted to overcome it i really wanted to overcome it and especially because this this was when both my kids were small and uh, i wanted them to know that they we should uh, we should learn we should overcome uh, the challenges that we face we should overcome our own uh, fears so what i did with them i went they both knew that i am scared of height they could see it but yes i actually went till the top i went till the top and they were cheering me down and that helped me go even you know take another step take another step and i was scared to death believe me but i embraced those challenges and i feel very proud because today i see both my kids you know they are overcoming the challenges what they face they learn from it they they think from their mind they are independent because of that so the small small things we do so that's when embracing challenges is important you know when you are cornered there is no other option but to perform and that's what happens when you embrace challenges you grow yourself and collaborate agile teams collaborate they work together they support each other and they believe that the project success is a collaborative success everybody's success not yours not mine it's everybody's success they welcome changes learn from mistakes implement learnings they keep things simple do not over complicate things they focus on values and they believe that by failing early we enhance our learning it's not that we want failures what it means is if we have to identify that there is a need for change let's find that out early in the cycle okay when it is less costly to fix those things right imagine after 6 months of delivery i find out that this de- this delivery this product was not at all what was expected as compared to every 15 days we are reviewing and we are finding out okay there is some change next 15 days yes this is what we want so the chances are high that we build the right product first time right agile teams build right product first time right so food for thought we are all work in progress so always look for improvements and improve okay i mean i have seen people sometimes they go and take feedback but what do they do with it of course you have to take every feedback with a pinch of salt but evaluate it and it's not j- just taking feedback you if you think that there might be some truth behind it or there might be some changes that needs to be done apply those action items take those action items so we are all work in progress enhance yourself enhance your skill set enhance your competencies okay with this we come to the end of first video in this chapter about agile agile mindset and what are the key factors to a successful mindset we also saw how it is different traditional and agile software development okay now before you uh, leave you know i would like you to go and look at www.eduhub spot.com okay we have lot of um, videos which are there lot of chapters corresponding to pmi acp exam prep go ahead and subscribe also subscribe to our youtube channel i keep adding interesting videos and since you are here at the end of this video which was pretty long one i i know i have helped you in understanding about agile so before you go and watch 
my next video on agile values and principles which will clarify more uh, the agile mindset subscribe to our channel so that you get notified whenever there is a new video which is uploaded okay so yes watch our next video by clicking here last uh, values and principles subscribe and my favorite video you can watch right this these are the details through which you can contact us happy reading study time bye bye